This morning, we're going to move back into the Unbelievable Faith series that we've been working through. We've been working through that for about the last 12 weeks. And over those weeks, we've looked at the unbelievable faith of a father, a son, uh, siblings, soldiers, a church, just so many different examples that we see in Scripture of people who have exhibited unbelievable faith. Now, this morning, we're going to look at an excuse maker's faith and how that all fits in. We're going to be in Exodus chapter 3. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn there. And we're going to be looking at the story of Moses. Now, I'm going to be working through chapters 3 and 4 this morning. And obviously, I don't have enough time to get through all of that. So I would encourage you sometime over this week, just take a little bit of time and read Exodus chapter 3 and chapter 4. Now, we pick up in verse 1 where Moses is tending by tending the sheep and, uh, and he sees this burning bush. And uh, so he gets closer to this bush and, and he notices that, that the bush is burning but it's not being burnt up. And, and then all of a sudden God speaks from this burning bush. And what God tells Moses is that he has seen the affliction of his people. You see, his people are in bondage in Egypt and they're, they're suffering greatly. And God wants to do something about that. And what he wants to do is he wants to send Moses to Pharaoh to deliver his people. Now, you can imagine that upon seeing a burning bush and hearing uh, the voice of God come from this bush, that, that Moses might have a few questions. And that's where we pick up in verse 11 of Exodus chapter 3. It says, But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? I mean, I mean here God speaks to Moses, and, and Moses' first thing is to, is to speak back to God, and simply here's what he says. Here's his question. He's like, Who am I? I mean, it's kind of like, Are you talking to me? I mean, are you really talking to me? Who am I? You, you, you want me to go and, and talk to Pharaoh? And, and I, I don't know. I think you might have the wrong person. I, I don't know that, that that's going to be me. But God, in verse 12, He simply says to Moses, but I will be with you. So Moses' first response after the burning bush, who am I? And here... God speaks back to him and says, I will be with you. Now, when we first read that and we think about it, we think, well, maybe that's just a comforting words to, to Moses. That's encouragement to him that, that he can go and he knows that God is with him. And, and I, I, don't, I don't know that that's necessarily what God is, is trying to do there. I mean, it is bringing comfort and, and hopefully it'll bring some hope to him. But, but what God is saying is, Listen, Moses, I'm going to be with you. In other words, I'm the one coming in this place and you're coming with me. Now, it, it, this reminds me of, uh, of times when I go out to eat lunch with, uh, with Pastor Brad. And, and uh, as we go to different places, we, we normally go into the restaurant and, well, we used to. Now we can, we can do that uh, on, a, on a, a smaller scale now. But when we'd go into a place, then, then, uh, there would inevitably be somebody that would wave or, or, um, say hello. And, and I would think, oh, they're talking to me. Maybe, maybe I know them. Maybe they know, they know me. But inevitably, nine times out of ten, it's that they know Pastor Brad. And so they're coming over to talk with him. And, and it's kind of like this setup where Moses is thinking, well, I'm going down to Pharaoh. They're all going to see me. And God is like, wait a minute. I'm going to be with you. I'm the one who's going to provide the miracle. I'm the one that's going to put all these things in place. This is, this is my show. And, and Moses, I'm wanting you to come along with me to see what is done. Well, Moses' next question is in, is in verse 13. Then Moses said to God, 
If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? In other words, Moses has gone from who am I to who are you? I mean, if the people ask me who you are, who, who do I tell them? Well, God is, God is going to respond once again. Verse 14, God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say this to the people of Israel. The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. So here's God's answer. God's answer is, I am. I am the God who was who was with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. I am the one that you have learned about in the past. I am who I am. I am going to deliver you. So in just these, this, these few verses, and, and we see what, what uh, Moses is asking, who am I? Who are you? And God replies back with, okay, I'm going to be with you. And he replies back with, don't you worry. You tell them, I am the God that they know and that they have heard about. You see, as we look at this, we've got to understand that, that what God is doing there is he is not attempting to be part of Moses' story. God is inviting Moses to be part of his story. You see, from the burning bush, God speaks and he invites Moses and, and he says, here, I'm going to do something and I want you to come along with me and I'm going to send you to Pharaoh and and I'm going to do all of these wonderful and, and marvelous works and I want you to come along with me. Now, as we look at, at some of the things that we could bring out of this, one of the things that, that we have to see here is that God is actively inviting us to be part of His story. You see, God invites us into what He's doing what he's already been a part of, what he's going to be a part of in the future. And, and he, brings, he brings us along to be part of his story. Now, in the story with Moses, the Israelites were suffering greatly. And, and they were going through uh, turmoil and, and tribulation and, and, and they needed someone to come in and, and interrupt the day and, and to be the Savior. And God is saying, this is who I'm going to be. You know, I think a lot in our day, in our day and what we're going through with, with COVID-19 and, and all that we've been uh, kind of sequestered, we're all by ourselves and, 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 and we're, we're just trying to figure all these things out. And there are a lot of people who are suffering and they are hurting and they're looking for someone to, to help them out. And, and I do believe that God is in is in work and he's in the midst and, and he's saying, you know what? I want you to come along with me to help those who are suffering. We think about things that have happened just around the church at this time during these days. I mean, we have to, we have to look at the food pantry and what God has done in such a miraculous thing. You see, there are people who are hurting. There are people who are without work and, and they're wondering where is our next meal coming from? And, and so we've had an opportunity to, to step into people's lives and, and to be able to help them out. And they've been so encouraged. And, and I remember when we put the first plea out uh, on Facebook and social media asking, hey, there's a need here. We had so many people show up to, to, the, to the, the, first, uh, the, the very first food pantry that, that we had right after the quarantine and all went into place. And there were so many people that showed up. We, we emptied the cupboards. There was nothing left to give, and we put the word out. And, and, uh, and some will say, a, a need seen is an opportunity given, as Pastor Brad says all the time. And, and I'm going to add just a little bit to that. A need seen is an opportunity given to step into God's story. 
And so when you heard about the need and, and, and you, you, you jumped into that, there are many of you that gave and, and literally thousands of dollars have come in. There are so many of you that have brought food that it, it fills up part of the gym with so much food that we've been able to give away. And, and over the weeks after that, there have been hundreds that have come to the food pantry. And what that is is that that is God saying, here's an invitation for you to come into my story because I am going to reach out to those who are hurting, those who are in need, and, and I'm going to show them who I am, and I'm bringing you along with me to be part of that. God is actively inviting us to be part of His story. Now, as this story with Moses keeps going on, Moses is questioned they, they turn to reasons to why he's going to fail. Look in chapter 4 and verse 1 with me. It says, Then Moses answered, But behold, they will not believe me, nor listen to my voice. For they will say, The Lord did not appear to you. So here's Moses saying, All right, I hear what you're saying, God, but it's not going to work because here's what they're going to say. He's putting words in their mouth before, before he even goes to them. He's saying, they're going to say, the Lord did not appear to you. But then look at God's response in verse 2. The Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? And he said, it, it's a staff. And he said, throw it on the ground. So Moses threw it on the ground and it became a serpent and Moses ran from it. But the Lord said to Moses, put out your hand and and catch it by the tail. So he put out his hand and caught it, and, and it became a staff in his hand, that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has appeared to you. So right after Moses is like, they're not going to listen to me, the Lord, God, he says, all right, I'm going to give you a sign. I'm going to give you a miracle. I'm going to give you that once people see this, then you know what? They're going to know that I sent you. And so he tells them, throw the staff down. He throws the staff down, turns it to a snake. He picks it back up and it turns back into a staff. So, so not only that, but, but it goes on in the next couple of verses, but the, God tells him, all right, Moses, uh, put your hand in your cloak. And he put his hand in his cloak. When he pulled it out, it was full of leprosy. And then he put it back in, pulled it back out, and it was totally healed. And then, just to top it all off, God says, all right, here's what I want you to do. Go and get some water from the Nile. And when you pour the water from the Nile out on the ground, it's going to be blood. So, so here... God's answer to Moses as to they're not going to listen to me because they're not going to think that, that you sent me. God gives him three signs, three ways that when people look at that, they say, oh my goodness, you must have been talking with the Lord God Almighty because there's no way you could do that on your own. Now, I don't know about you, when I look at that, I think to myself, self, you know, if I had three miraculous signs that, that I could do, if I could make a stick of snake and, and water to blood and, and turn my hand to leprosy, then, then maybe people would listen to me. Maybe God, when you ask me to do something, yeah, I, I, I'll do it. The thing is, is that we do have something just as great, if not greater. The thing is our story or our, our testimony. You see, when people say, you know what, I don't know that you've been with God. And then we start telling about how God saw us and He got us right exactly where we were. And He provided salvation to us. And He set us in a new place. And, and it's a story that, that, that nothing or no one can deny because God has done a tremendous work in our life that when people look at us, they don't look at the same person that we were. Now they're seeing there's a different person. What's going on with you? You see, you see, the miracle 
is that God wants to use our testimony to show an unbelieving world that He is God. Now, I know some of you are like, yeah, well, well, that's just, that's just one thing. That's just one thing. Moses, he had three things. If, if I had three things, well, then I'd be good and I, I'd be set to go. Listen, listen, here you got three things. You got God the Father, you got God the Son, and you got God the Holy Spirit. You got all three of those things. You see, God the Father showed a grace and mercy upon you while you were st- still sinning that he sent Jesus to die upon a cross for our sins and raise again to conquer sin and death. And then they sent the Holy Spirit of God to be with us each and every day so that we can go through our day seeing when God is inviting us to be a part of his work and what he is doing. You see, I got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I've got the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. I can move forward because I know that my testimony is God's sign to an unbelieving world. Well, Moses, he's still not, he's still not conv- convinced yet. Look in verse 10, Moses' next reason as to why this plan will fail. He says, he says to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, either in the past or since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and of tongue. So Moses goes to the place to where, where he says, you know what? I can't do it. I, I can't speak like that. I, I wasn't made to be able to do that. You obviously have made some kind of mistake because I just cannot do this. God's response, verse 11. Then the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Who makes him mute or deaf or seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now therefore go and I will be your mouth and teach you what you shall speak. The Lord says back to Moses, basically, duh, I know you're not an eloquent speaker. I created you. I created your mouth. I created some who can speak, some who can't speak, some who can walk, some who can't walk. I have created all of these things. This is by me and by my will. And don't you worry about what you can't do because I will be with you in the midst of what you feel like you can't do. Listen, here's a great lesson for every single one of us. And, and we've heard this phrase before, but, but I think we need reminding of it. God is not concerned with your ability, but with your availability. God is not concerned with what you think you can or cannot do. He knows that already. He is concerned with, will you be one who will say, despite this, despite me not knowing who you are, despite me thinking people won't, won't listen to me. Despite me thinking I can't really speak or or communicate, I will be available. Now, now I know every time we start talking about spiritual gifts and talents and abilities and and all those things, people feel like, well, I I just I just can't do that. I I, I just I, I just can't. Listen, over over the past few years with, with me dealing with multiple sclerosis, well, actually it's been over 21 years now, it, it, it's come to the place in my mind over and over again that, that God, I just don't know that I can do this. Why are you calling me to this? What, what are you wanting me to do? Why are you inviting me into this? And I got to be like Moses and realize that, that it is not about what I can or cannot do. This is about God getting His glory and God performing things and providing miracles to people who are in need. This is about God's story. And what he's saying, he's saying, I don't really care about what you think you can or cannot do. I want you to be into my story because I want you to be part of it. Moses' final expression in verse 13, but he said, Oh my Lord, please send someone else. Moses' heart is, is, truly, is truly put out here. This is what he's been trying to say the whole time. Send someone else, not me. I, 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 I'm not, I, I don't want to do it. The verses go on and, and the Lord does get angry with Moses and, and tells him, hey, hey, take Aaron, you do this, you, you go about your business, you go about what the business that I'm calling you to do. 
you go to Pharaoh, and you know the rest of the story, how he went to Pharaoh and how all that turned out. But as we look at, at all of this, and we try to figure out what is it that, that God is really, really wanting to speak to me? What, what is He wanting to, to say to me today? Well, I think He's trying to tell us that He's got a story that He's inviting us to be a part of. And it doesn't matter about how we feel and, and what all the answers, and we don't have all the answers and, and all these things. It, it, he's just saying, I want you to be part of this story. And, and why was God so adamant about Moses being part of this story? Well, it's because God knows that Moses' fulfillment in life is only found in obedience to God. You see, for us, if we are trying to live outside of God's story, if we're trying to figure out how do we do this and, and we're saying, nope, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to be a part of it because I don't feel like I can, but yet God is saying, hey, this is what I want you to do. This is where I want you to be. This is what I, who I want you to talk to. And we continue to say, no, 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 then we are going to live a life without joy, without hope. We'll live a life in despair and in fear. But when we step into God's story upon His invitation, that's where we find joy and hope and satisfaction that, yep, this is where God wants me to be. So what does this mean for me? What does this mean for you? You see, right now, our world is hurting. Now, I'm glad that that things are starting to lighten up just a little bit. I mean, I am so excited that next week that, that I'm going to be able to go get a haircut because I really need a haircut very badly. And so, so I'm excited about this. But if I go back into kind of a normal lifestyle and not learn anything over what's happened over the past seven weeks or so, then that I am truly missing out on what God is inviting me into. You see, as we go out, we're going to be able to talk to people and, and to be able to, to explain why we have hope even when there wasn't much hope going on. There are people who are hurting that we're going to be able to reach into their lives and, and we're going to see the, 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 the opportunity that, that's being given to us for us to reach into that and to be a part of that. Maybe there's some of you that, that through this time you're thinking, you know what? God may be, may be leading me into starting a home group or, or inviting people into my home so we can study the scripture together because I took that for granted before and I don't want to, I don't want to miss out on that. And some of you may be saying, you know what? I, I still don't feel comfortable traveling out yet. What, what do you think God might be calling me to do? Listen, do not feel bad. If you don't feel like you need to be going out right now, there's nothing wrong with that. But what is God calling you to in your own home? I mean, when people call you on the phone, those are opportunities for you to minister to people. Uh, when family comes by, then, then you have the opportunity to, uh, to reach out, to pray, and, and to be a part of each other's lives. You see, see, here's the thing is that as we look, here's a person that that made an excuse. We don't need to make any excuses. We need to step forward in faith in what God is doing. And He's doing a work in our land and we can be a part of that. There are people who need to know the story of Christ. When God puts that upon your heart, will you say, okay, I'll do it. I'll share. I don't know what I'm going to say. I, I, I'm not sure. But... Will you just simply say, God, it is not about me. It is all about you. And God, I am available. You see, as we move forward, God wants to continue to work with us and through us as we come into his story. Now, for the next few minutes, why don't, why don't you spend a little bit of time just in your home with with your family or if you have a group there. And just uh, think about these two questions. One is, what is God inviting you to be a part of? I mean, think through it. What do you think God is inviting you to be a part of over these next 
few days, weeks, or even months? And then second is, what is your first step in accepting the invitation? In other words, what do you need to do in order to be part of what God is inviting you into? God bless you as you continue to to serve God, as you continue to listen to Him, and as you continue to go into the invitation that God is leading you into. We love you. God bless you.